In this exercise, I want to um, bring us back to something a little bit more simple. I've been showing a lot of advanced stuff. Um, we've done lots of linear stuff and we've just started to introduce the idea of not just being linear but being circular. So now let's just try some very basic, um, very basic circular concepts. So look, this, this hand, this hand goes out, so the quad goes in and I'm turning this way, I'm using this footwork. One, two, this is like a slingshot. This is how you would hit someone, by the way, like you just reduce this to a very small movement. This is what you call spiral routing. It's genuine spiral routing. And people talk about spiral routing. And some of the stuff they come out with is nonsense. And the reason you know it's nonsense is they can't hit anything with it. Um, well, they can hit a phony student who'll throw themselves back, but they can't get a bag with it. But I can tell you, and I will demonstrate that. So, foot down, foot down, foot down. The quack goes in, quack goes in, and the hand comes out. And then what we want to do then is change to the other side of the figure eight footwork. Change to the other side so that this hand comes out this way. So. Again, I'm just slipping on this floor, but I'm just going with it. And the other way. So again, start from there. As this, this, as this hand goes this way, this arm also starts to move. And this is the principle that, um, it's kind of, sounds like a kind of obscure each one principle. Um, that like, the, the, Wang Ching Jai says the opposite part of the body moves first. To what you're going to hit with so um, but this is something really useful that doesn't matter what kind of martial art you do, if you do any kind of striking with your hands or anything like that the idea that when you think about you're going to punch to avoid particularly to avoid you know tells where you give it away before you're going to punch start with the other side of your body so this hand pulls back and you consciously think like i'm going to hit with this but the first thing it, what i'm thinking about in my mind is elbowing back like that it just makes you, yeah, and then you really feel this idea that the movement begins on the other side of the body. Um, so this is very, very much the, the, the feeling, this is very much the feeling I have, um, it, that even though this is going first, this, this is what's moving first. And you can do it just from just from a standing position. And then the steps it becomes a little bit more difficult because um, you've got to think about how you're going to phase it into the step movement, and there's multiple different ways. So one for me, just one in to the opposite hand and leg. I'm having to do an extra little phase. I don't have to, I could just do it slower. So you could maybe start like that. I'm saying maybe that's exactly how I teach it. One. See, I almost went. I almost went over there. So you go into like. Um, it's good. You kind of go into the extremes of your balance, and you've got to really fight for it. Um, it really improves your balance, and you. Um, you just you never give in. You know, you don't give in to the to the floor. But then you can add the. start adding in 
Okay, and just trying to keep them on this same plane. Sometimes rising, sometimes staying low, sometimes going even lower and rising. Or relative to each other, staying on this. Staying on that plane. If you're wondering where the dog is, he's over there looking at me. Give me the stink eye because he wants to go out. Um, but I think the dog's reaction is very interesting because he isn't normally like that when you see the dog going mad when I'm doing the, the movement. And it's because when you train, when you change your structural movement to the habitual, when you start doing this, when you start looking like a giant insect, I think um, this kind of movement to me is very mantisy. You know, it's like um, it's really got that that flavour of mantis to it. Um, the dog doesn't like it because it's like, well, that's not you. What, you know, the dog's very used to, of, of all creatures, the dog's really recognise your posture and the way you move. And when you suddenly change it like that, you start becoming like, more like an animal, like a, or a giant insect or something like that. That's what makes the dog go mad. That's why the dog's jumping up at me. Um, when normally he pretty much never behaves like that. So I think that's something interesting that I've realised doing these, these, uh, these videos. In any case, the next thing is we can change just as before so that the hands are on different different planes and we can begin to move with that and even change it relatively like this. So we're doing the and you're a little bit more advanced you can start thinking about well, where's my lock point here for the the hitting with the or even just start changing it playing with it like that then if you want to go even more advanced then you just start adding in the a movement people have a lot of trouble with bringing it on this plane but then articulating the wrist it's a lot harder than it looks if you can do it good people it's a lot harder than it looks Finally, combine, just combine. And, and if you are, um, if you get this feeling of, um, so this is much more advanced, if you get this feeling, this figure of eight and this spiral rooting and then you bring it into just very, the smallest movement, so it's almost you can't even, just the hips are just doing. This is just the kind of thing you do if you're holding someone and you push and pull them, but you're doing it in a tiny, tiny movement. You can practice doing it against the back, by the way, to get, to get the feeling all around. Bringing it into push hands where you, you just move someone like, well, it depends how you're moving. It's, uh, moving my student is not, quite as easy as moving some people but um, he's moving me more than I'm moving him at the moment um, but particularly if you're not you know people aren't used to kind of anyway you can bring it into 